Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about this video. I've been planning it for a while. We are going to be discussing my Foundation 101 course. Technically not a course, but these are the tips that I have discovered over the last 10 to 15 years of trying so many different foundations out. Getting a foundation to work and getting my skin to look its most flawless. We're gonna be talking about shade matching, about customizing your shade. We'll go over skin prep application tips and tricks, and even answer the most basic question of all. Do you even need foundation? Some of you may not. And the biggest secret of all that I'm going to lay bare in this video today is that it's not even really about the particular foundation. There are other things that are more important than the foundation formula. So don't go chasing after every new TikTok viral foundation. I can't wait to share it with you guys today. Before we get into that though, if you are a new visitor, welcome to my channel. Please consider subscribing and make sure that your notifications are turned on. With that out of the way, we've got a lot to get into. So let's get to it. Okay, so first off, the biggest question is, do I really need foundation? Now, chances are, if you are watching this video, you probably already determined that you are someone that does need foundation. But I do get this question sometimes, and even for women who are over 40, I do know some women that just are blessed with naturally beautiful skin that just need a little help here and there, and therefore they do not need or use foundation. If you have beautiful skin, don't cover it up with foundation. Only use concealer where you absolutely need it. Foundation is gonna work best for those of us that have a lot of widespread, discoloration. Maybe we have some rosacea or just some underlying redness that we need to conceal. A lot of hyperpigmentation perhaps. Or maybe we have some shade disparity. Maybe your face is significantly lighter than the rest of your body, especially if you are someone that uses a lot of sunscreen, that does a lot of exfoliating. You might need a foundation to kind of get your face to match the rest of your body. So I'm gonna start a little clip for you guys right here. This is me as I am right now, bare face, but all of my beauty lights are turned off. So this is me in terrible lighting, a little bit dimmed down so you can see the type of discoloration that I deal with. As you can see here, I have some under eye circles and darkness that I need to kind of combat. Now that could be done with concealer, but the rest of my face, I have quite a bit of hyperpigmentation and discoloration on. A lot of sunspots or age spots. I technically don't know what you call these at the age of 44. A lot of us deal with it as we get older, especially if you have gone through quite a few pregnancies, you can get a lot of this discoloration on your face. And I like to kind of minimize it just a little bit. And foundation does a really good job at helping me to conceal that. It's just too wide of an area for me to do with concealer alone. However, as you can see here, I also do with a lot of fine lines. I do not do Botox or fillers. So this is a natural 43 year old woman that you are seeing here. I have a lot of fine lines. I have a lot of expression lines. And while these are not determinative of me using foundation, they are definitely troublesome areas that you kind of need to work around and consider as you are using and applying your foundation, which we'll get into in a little bit here. So I am definitely a good candidate for a foundation. I have a lot of discoloration that I want to kind of balance balance out and even out and foundation helps me to do that. The next most important thing in your foundation 101 is your skin prep. Now, skin prep is not that complicated for me as someone with dry skin. Keep in mind, this may be different for you if you do have a different skin type. But for my dry skin, I love a good hydrating primer. You can certainly use a moisturizer, but I have found some primers that I think add even more hydration, maybe more of even a like serum-like effect and sometimes a little bit of glow, which I also love. But it's really the moisture that I need prior to putting my foundation on my skin. A couple that I love, first off, my Flower Beauty Celestial Supernova Celestial Priming Whip. This stuff is amazing. It also has a bit of Glow. Probably my most hydrating primer, this is technically a serum, is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Dew Drops. This is so lovely. If you really have extremely dry skin, this stuff really softens up your skin prior to your foundation application. I also love the Pacifica Vegan Collagen Skin Solve Primer. This is super hydrating. It reminds me a lot of the Glow Recipe, but it does have a little bit more glow in it. It's almost a little bit pigmented. It's maybe like a cross between these two. Those are probably my favorite hydrating primers. For my primer, I like to put it on and then almost immediately put on my foundation. I don't like to let my primer totally sink in and set because I really want to take advantage of that freshly softened skin. If I wait too long, I find I lose that advantage that my primer gives me after about 30 minutes or so. So for today, I'm going to add my Flower Beauty primer. It's going to take about this much. You can kind of experiment. Use a little trial and error to determine how much of your primer you're actually going to need. This is something that I think takes a little bit of practice as with all of these tips and tricks. But I like to put it just about everywhere. Get a nice fresh layer of hydration. 
Now for step three, this is probably the most important and perhaps the most complicated of the tips or steps that I'm sharing with you guys today, and that is shade matching and customizing. Getting your foundation shade just right is, in my opinion, the most important thing in getting your foundation to look right on you. I've tried a lot of foundations over the years, and I've noticed that what most makes me dislike a foundation is not the formula, it is when the shade is off on me and I notice it later in the day and I especially notice this when the shade is too light. When I've gone too light with my foundation, I just find it doesn't match the rest of my body. It looks a little bit off. I look a little sickly and pale, which is something you want to avoid, especially the older you get when you naturally just, I don't want to say you naturally look more sickly and pale, but you need a little bit of life in your face. You've kind of lost some of that youthful natural glow. So it's very important to get the shade match right. And spoiler alert, I have never found a foundation that is perfectly matching me right out of the bottle. Most of the time it requires me doing a little bit of mixing and matching. And I don't even mind if I have to mix different formulas together. The shade match is more important than the formula to me. There are a lot of formulas that I like and that I can get to work for me, but the match supersedes the importance of all other things in a foundation. Now this is something that's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. It's also likely going to take you trying more than one foundation or foundation shade or owning more than one foundation shade. But I have a little tip for those of you that don't want to go out. Maybe you have like a YSL foundation that you really love. I don't think I've ever tried a YSL foundation. Let's use this one. Say the Kosas foundation. You love this foundation. Maybe you bought it. You got the shade match just a little bit wrong. It doesn't quite work for you, but you don't want to go out and spend $40 on another high-end foundation. My recommendation is to run to the drugstore, maybe try out a Maybelline or e.l.f., both of which make some really affordable foundations, and get a shade that you know is quite a bit too light for you and one that you know is a couple of shades too dark for you. Buy them both, bring them home, and you can add those to your other shades that are not quite right. Sometimes just adding a tiny bit of another foundation that doesn't have to be a high-end formula can help you get that match just right without breaking the bank. As far as undertones go, now this is a much harder question to answer that I'm not fully gonna address in this video. I would recommend doing some research on undertones because I'm not a professional makeup artist. I have heard mixed things over the years as far as are you cool, are you warm? This is also something I think takes a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of practice and experience over the years, I have personally discovered that I am, I have kind of an olivey, almost a green, yellowish green undertone to my skin. I don't know if that makes me cool or warm, honestly, but I generally find that the foundations that are no-goes for me are the ones that are very strongly peach or pink. Now, even those ones, you can kind of combat, if you have a larger collection, if you have a lot of different undertones in your collection, maybe over the years you've collected five or six or 10 different foundation bottles. Some are too peach, some are too green. Well, if your foundation is too peach or too pink, you wanna kind of think of the opposite on the color wheel, which would be kind of like a bluish yellow, which would be a green. So for example, I have right here the Dior Backstage Foundation. This one is in the shade 2N. This foundation I love, but it does pull a little pinky peach on me. So I actually like to combine it with this one from Kosas, which is in Olive 210. And this foundation I also really love, but this one is almost too yellowy green. These two together, however, work really well. Let me just give these a little swatch to kind of just show you guys what I'm talking about. So I'm actually gonna swatch these on my face. So this is the, actually I better turn my lights down just a bit. Okay, so here we have, I don't know how well you're gonna see that. This is the backstage foundation. And then here we have the Kosas foundation. As you guys can see, this one is much more kind of greenish yellow. This one, I feel like on, on my viewfinder, it's almost looking like it's an exact match, but I know when I blend this foundation out, it kind of looks a little pink on me. It looks a little bit off, but these two mixed together actually make a really great shade match for me. Sometimes if I am maybe in the middle of winter and both of these are a bit too dark, I will add something that I know is too light for me, significantly too light for me, just to lighten it up a little bit. For example, I could take my Superstay Skin Tint in 118, which on its own is much too light for me. So undertones can be a little bit complicated. It's gonna take a little bit of trial and error, but I want to tell you guys what I typically like to match my foundation or how I like to match my foundation. So I strategically wore a v-neck shirt today so that you guys could see the disparity between the color of my arms. I do have like the last of my summer tan kind of wearing off right now. The color of my neck, which is slightly lighter, 
and then the color of my actual face, which is even lighter than that. If you are someone that uses a lot of sunscreen, a lot of exfoliants or retinols on your face, your face is likely gonna be a shade or two lighter than your neck and the rest of your body. So you don't actually want to match perfectly your actual face. You want to kind of match your whole body together so you can get a nice blend. I typically like to try and match about this area of my skin. That's kind of the color that I am shooting for. And then I'll just use some blending techniques to kind of tie these colors together. That way my face doesn't look, I don't look like I have a white ghost face and then tan arms, then kind of like a medium colored neck. You wanna make it all kind of blend together. Again, that's gonna take a little bit of practice, but just keep that in mind when you are matching your foundation. You don't necessarily wanna match it just to what your natural face color is. And say that one day you try a foundation and you think, gosh, this foundation just looks a little sickly on me. Is it too light? Try adding something a little bit darker to it to deepen it up a little bit and see if that will help because nine times out of ten if I've thought that about a foundation and have tried darkening it up with something else I've ended up liking it. So bottom line don't be afraid to customize different colors and formulas together to try to get the shade match just right and sometimes I actually even like customizing formulas together just to get formulas to work a little bit better with me. For example, I love to mix in my Infallible Freshwear Foundation with some of my more dewy foundations that don't last as long. It gives them just a little bit of longevity. As far as addressing formulas, I'm less picky about a formula and I kind of feel like most formulas these days, I'm sure I haven't tried them all, but it's very rare that I find a foundation formula that I absolutely hate. Most of the time I can get them to work for me. If they're a little bit dry, I just need a little bit more primer or hydration underneath. If they're a little bit dewy, maybe I need a little bit more powder on top. Those are the kind of things you can think through to kind of get a foundation to work for you regardless of what the formula is. Okay, let's move on to application. So we are actually going to apply some foundation to my face now that my primer has been sitting there for a good 20 minutes or so. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of a live customization of foundation. So I have right here my Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation. This is one of my favorite drugstore foundations. It is a thicker foundation. Now this one on its own, let's have a look. I actually think this is probably almost a perfect shade match on its own. I have the shade three light beige. I think this might be just a hair too light for me. I don't know if you guys will see, if I put it on my arm, you'll see it's way too light. Obviously we're not trying to match my arm. I don't usually have to do this. I just kind of do this by eyeball. Yeah, so it's even a little bit too light for my neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a foundation that's just a touch darker. So one that I like to use from the drugstore, I don't think I even mentioned this one, is my Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation because it is so affordable. And I have this shade Caramel, which is a medium deep shade. It's way too dark for me. I would never use this on its own, but it's one of my favorites to mix in because I only need the tiniest amount to darken up a foundation that I'm trying to customize. So I'm just going to take this tiny little dot add it to the foundation on the back of my hand. Now let's talk about application. I don't think there is a wrong way to apply your foundation. What I have found over the years, you're gonna get the best coverage out of your foundation with your fingers or with a brush. But that said, I also like to use a sponge to blend out the edges of my foundation. Now when it comes to applying your foundation to your face, a couple things to keep in mind, especially if you are over the age of 40, if you deal with a lot of fine lines, maybe you have some texture on your skin, let me just talk about where I have to be careful. I have a lot of fine lines on my forehead. I have some expression lines in between my eyebrows. So I'm never gonna start applying my foundation there because that's where I'll concentrate the most product. The place I actually like to start is kind of on the outer part of my cheeks where I don't have the texture that I have closer to my nose, but I also need a lot of coverage there because I have a lot of discoloration. So I will typically take my foundation. Now I sometimes will dab it on with my fingers. Sometimes I'll just go directly with my brush. And I like to use a brush that's a little dense like this. There's this one from It Cosmetics. I know Elf has one that is almost exactly like this one right here. Actually, I'm gonna use this one today. This is from Persona. I typically just like to use something that is synthetic and dense. There are tons of brands out there that make really great foundation brushes. So I have my initial foundation application on both sides of my cheeks. I typically like to start with a little bit less and then build up if I need to. I don't want to apply too much because then it's difficult to take it off. That's when you start to get kind of the heavy cakiness. So I'm gonna tap this in really well in this area right here. I wanna avoid going too close to my eye for the most part. There are some times if I'm in a huge hurry, I'll just apply it everywhere. But I typically avoid these areas because my concealer will catch those areas and I just kind of put this 
more on like the perimeter of my face. I spread it out there and then with what is left on my brush, then I will go to the areas that are a little bit more finicky where I have some pores or some lines around my mouth and nose, on my forehead. So by the time I get to these areas, I don't have as much product on my brush. But as you can see, as far as shade match goes, you can see I, it's darkened my face up just a little bit, but it's looking much more in line with my neck down below, which is just how I like it. If you do get your shade match wrong, if you go a little bit too light, you can always add some bronzer to try and tie it all together, which will help. But it's always best, if you can, to get it right out of the gate. So when applying my foundation with a brush, I do a lot of tapping, a little bit of pulling, but kind of more tapping motions than anything. And that is it. That is where I will stop with my foundation application. If I do have areas, depending on what formula I'm using, I typically like medium coverage foundation formulas. Anything lighter than that is not gonna give me enough. Anything heavier than that is just gonna look too heavy on my very aging skin. But I typically will need a little bit more coverage. That's when I'll reach for a concealer to get some of those areas like the very dark hyperpigmentation marks. Those I kind of just strategically target. I'm just gonna take my Kosas concealer today. I go pretty light with my concealer and only use it where I need it. I don't like to swipe concealer. That does not work for me and my dry aging skin. Honestly, I feel like everyone could do with a little bit less concealer, unless you're really going for that like Instagram. I feel like cake face sounds mean. I know some women like their makeup heavy and that is just fine. I just like mine to look as natural as possible especially the older I get. If you go too heavy with your foundation and or concealer, it just doesn't look good, especially in person. Trust me, guys. As you can see, I'm just targeting some of these areas where I have a couple of spots or hyperpigmentation marks. I'm gonna add a concealer, it's just a bit lighter to my inner corner here. This is the Revlon Flex Concealer in, I think it's light. And then also to my eyelids is kind of my eyelid primer and to get rid of my eyelid discoloration. I'm gonna blend that out with a brush today. I've been really loving a brush lately, but for years I've been, uh, I've used a sponge for my concealer, which also works well. By the way, oh, I forgot to share one of my tips. We'll do it after I blend out my concealer. I'll share with you guys a very important tip for foundation looking flawless that I feel like sometimes we overlook. It's kind of ironic that I forgot about it for a moment because this is something that I feel like I'm very good at not forgetting because I've discovered how bad it looks later when I notice my lines of, what do they call, demarcation. All right now I'm gonna blend out the concealer on my eyes. Okay, one more application technique or tip that I want to share with you guys is to have a clean, damp sponge on hand. Now this isn't necessarily even for blending out your foundation or your concealer. You can use it for that if you'd like. But regardless of what application method I am doing, what this is most important for is getting rid of any lines, foundation lines around your hairlines. That is where you will find a dead giveaway that you have a lot of foundation on and it looks very unnatural, is when it gathers around your hair or around your eyebrows or even around your jawline if you went a little heavy down here. You wanna use your damp foundation to kind of pull any excess product off. I actually will go around my hairline and I kind of hold my hair back and just almost rub it out. I don't need coverage there and I want there to be like a nice blend between my, where my foundation ends and where my hairline begins. I don't know if you guys have ever seen someone that has that very obvious like their scalp color is way different than their foundation color on their face and it just looks kind of off. This is just gonna help kind of fade that a little bit and make it a little less obvious. Then I also like to go around my brows, which is another thing. I know some people like to do their brows first. This is the reason I don't do my brows first is so that I can make sure the blend around my brows is complete and I don't get that foundation gathering around there. You could also use your fingers, but I find a damp sponge to be the most helpful. All right, so there it is. This is my flawless face. As you can see, it matches my neck pretty well. It's not too far off my arms. Now bronzer is gonna help me get a little bit closer to here. My arms are always gonna be tanner than the rest of my body, particularly my face and my neck, because I, even in the winter, I'm either doing a little bit of self tanning or I use a lotion that has a tiny bit of a self tanner in it, but I'm fine with that. 
this is a pretty good match. Again, I can do this with a million different formulas. I almost never use just one foundation on its own. Don't be afraid to mix and match and concoct different things. So now I'm gonna run and put on the rest of my makeup, then I'll come back and share with you guys just a few final thoughts. All right, and here it is with all the rest of my makeup on. I will link everything that I'm wearing down below for you guys. As you can see, nice and flawless looking not too heavy but everything's nice and covered that i want to be covered as far as the match you can see that most of my face matches the top of my my chest or the bottom of my neck which is kind of what i'm shooting for and then even with my arms being a little bit darker with my bronzer my blush on everything's just kind of tied together perfectly i hope that you guys found this video these tips helpful one final thing i just wanted to emphasize or note when it comes to foundation i see so much of people chasing after the perfect foundation formula that's going to kind of be the fountain of youth. I am guilty of it too. I mean, I just bought the Easy Blur Foundation because I've fallen for the hype or I at least have to see what the hype is all about. But here's what I've discovered over the years after trying so many different foundations. None of them are magic in a bottle, but more importantly, I think it's application. I think it's a little bit of practice. Those are the things that are really going to get your foundation to work the magic that is out there. So all of that to say, don't fall for every new foundation release thinking that it's somehow going to do wonders for you but there are a lot of things that you can do to work around some of the issues that you have whether that's a lot of discoloration fine lines that will allow you to have your most flawless look still look like a human and just look your very best which is in my opinion the idea of a good foundation and a good base but that is going to do it for this video today thank you all so much for watching i hope that you're doing well let me give you one final reminder make sure to subscribe before you leave and i will see you in my next video bye